Hello and welcome. Now the play The Tempest by William Shakespeare is known as one of his tragic comedies. What tragic comedy means as a genre is basically a play or a story that fuses and mixes together elements of tragedy with comedy and this is what is included within this play. So do bear in mind in terms of genre this play is classified as a tragic comedy. Now there are lots of different events that happen within this play and of course it can be kind of easy to get lost in the details. So if you're studying this play as part of your coursework or exams, of course, it's really important to read the play, so to read the original writing of William Shakespeare. However, what I want to do in this video is essentially present you with a mind map summarizing all the major events in a nutshell. So as you can see behind me, essentially what I've done is I've summarized in 12 separate steps what happens within the play and this is useful particularly if you're studying this on a last minute basis or if you just want to be able to take a step back and look at all the events that happen within this play. Do bear in mind as well that I will be having videos where I go into detail on all the key quotations you need to understand and know when it comes to the play's main characters so do make sure you also check that out where I'm going to go and select the key quotations for each character as well as the word love analysis you can do if you're writing about them for your coursework or exams. Now what we're going to do is we will look at the events of this play in a nutshell. So the Tempest in terms of the plot begins with us learning of a ship and obviously reading and witnessing as the audience a ship that's carrying Alonso who's the king of Naples, Ferdinand, Sebastian, Antonio, Gonzalo, Stefano and Trelano and this ship becomes shipwrecked okay it begins to sink. Now, we learn separately that Prospero, another key character, of course, he's, in fact, he's the protagonist of this play, he tells his daughter Miranda that he caused the shipwreck, okay? So there's lots of supernatural elements. Prospero is revealed to be a supernatural character. He has magical abilities, and he is the one that deliberately caused this shipwreck. Now, Prospero tells his daughter Miranda about his brother called Antonio, who's also part of this ship that's been shipwrecked, now, he tells her, his daughter Miranda, of Antonio's betrayal and the reason why, so we learn that Prospero, his daughter Miranda, Caliban and Ariel, they are essentially exiled and living in some form of isolation on an island near Italy. We never get the precise location, but we learn that they are living in exile away from the city that they came from, Milan. He used to be the Duke of Milan. They're now living on this island. Now, Prospero reveals to his daughter Miranda that the reason why they are there is because of the betrayal that happened as a result of his own brother okay and we also of course as I've mentioned learn that they're exiled on the island along with Ariel and Caliban who have magical powers okay so we learn that Prospero essentially does not want to be on the island that they're on and he has deliberately caused this shipwreck then Prospero tells his spirit and slave Ariel to follow the crew. So this is the shipwrecked crew, Alonso, Ferdinand, Sebastian, Antonio, Gonzalo, Stefano and Trelano. He tells and asks Ariel to follow them. And Ariel leads Ferdinand, who is of course part of this crew, and he's also Alonso's son. He leads him to Miranda, Prospero's daughter, okay? And they instantly fall in love. So when Fer Miranda and Ferdinand meet, uh, they instantly fall in love, okay? Then uh, Alonso, the king, searches and searches for his son Ferdinand, okay? This is the son that Ariel has led away and of course he then meets Miranda, falls in love with him. Now, Alonso, the king of Naples, searches for his son. However, he ends up believing that his son got consumed within the shipwreck and he's now dead. So he believes that he's dead. Then separately, Sebastian Antonio, who is Prospero's brother, remember that Antonio is the brother that basically betrayed Prospero, so we know that he's a villain. They both decide to plot and kill Alonso, the king of Naples, and take the crown. So we find that Prospero's brother Antonio is actually somebody who constantly uh, has elements of betrayal within him, okay? So they plot to kill the king of Naples, Alonso, okay? Then, separately, the ship's jester, Trinculo, and butler, Stefano, meet Caliban, who is Prospero's slave. So remember that on the island, Prospero also has another slave called Caliban. So these guys meet him, and Caliban persuades them to kill Prospero. However, unbeknownst to Caliban, 
Ariel is there and Ariel has listened to what he's talking about. Therefore, Ariel decides to go and of course inform Prospero. So we learned that Ariel is actually very, very loyal to Prospero. So he overhears of this plot and reports it back to his master Prospero. Then Prospero gives Ferdinand and Miranda, so remember that separately Ferdinand and Miranda have fallen in love, Prospero gives them the blessing for the union and their marriage. And after Prospero has spoken to Ariel and he learns of this plot by Caliban to betray him and kill him, he and Ariel set traps for the plotters and the, these traps work and they eventually scare them off, okay? Then Prospero ends up vowing at the completion of his plan that he will renounce all of his magical abilities. So he decides that when he has uh, succeeded with what he wishes to do, he's going to give up his magical abilities and become just a regular mortal. Then Prospero ends up revealing himself to Alonso as well as his followers and he confronts them and eventually ends up forgiving them okay so we learn that Prospero once he meets this uh, ship's crew and of course the people that have been shipwrecked he actually tells them of all the bad things that they did to him however he ends up forgiving them so Prospero is presented as actually a very good person at heart which is the opposite of his brother also, he grants Ariel, his servant, the freedom, which is his final act of magic before he renounces all his magical abilities. Now, finally, the play ends with Prospero preparing to leave the island to return to Milan and, and have his title of being the Duke of Milan restored. Okay, so the uh, play ends on a good note, on a positive note, with Prospero essentially trying to return back to Milan and restoring his title as the Duke. So that's it when understanding the play in a nutshell when it comes to learning about the Tempest but do make sure you come back where I go over all the key characters beginning with Prospero and the quotations and word level analysis you want to do if you're writing about any of these characters or indeed the play as a whole.